So, um, Nova, can you kindly confirm you can see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see us fine. Okay, perfect. All right. So, everyone, good evening. If you are joining us today, you're welcome. If you were here yesterday, you probably know what we have been discussing about. So, it's still the same topic building dashboards that are insightful stories, right? So, I'm going to just introduce myself again for the sake of others I didn't join yesterday. So my name is Chinon Sokonko and I'm a Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst. And today we are going to be going through an hands-on session. So we're going to be going through a case study. So yesterday, what we discussed for the sake of others that weren't here, yesterday what we discussed was about insightful dashboards. So we talked about understanding your audience, providing context, creating a compelling narrative, um, removing clutter from your dashboard, like minimizing the use of color, using color to draw attention. And we also mentioned a bit about DAX, which is going to help you uncover more insights from your data. So we'll talk about DAX today as we go along this um, project, this case study, and yeah, let's just go ahead. So let's go to the case study. I'm just going to skip this. This was what we covered yesterday. Real quick. Yes, that's perfect now. So for our case study today, you'll be working as a BI developer for not win traders a global import and export company that specializes in supplying high quality gourmet food products to restaurants, cafes, and specialty food retailers around, around the world. Let me minimize this. As part of your role, you've been tasked with building a top level KPI dashboard for the executive team. Now its purpose should be able to allow them quickly understand the company's performance in key areas, including sales trends, product performance, key customers, and shipping costs. Now, the dashboard should be built to evolve and accommodate new data over time, but you've been encouraged by your manager to add insights ready to share with the VPs. This is your chance to impress. So let's add a bit about... So get to know the data set. So we have sales and other data for not wing traders, a features gourmet food supplier, including information on customers, products, orders, employees. Um, we are going to go step by step. Now this is this is a project, so this is going to take time. So the key is to So now, about this three yesterday, we did a lot of slides and talking, and we're able to just do it. Um, just if you answer, on, just do right now. Let me just, let me just. Just open it. Um, more patients. So I'm waiting for Power BI to come up now. So I know you have not gotten to see the data, so you're going to see the data. Once I bring it into Power BI, so once you come to Power BI, this is the first page you see. So if you have some recovered files, you're going to see that. So I'm going to close that for now. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to get data. In. So the first thing is to go to the Home tab, get data from what? From a CSV file. Now, my data is stored in a folder, so there are so many ways I can do this. I can get data from a folder. 
and I can duplicate my queries, but I'm just going to use this one. We don't have much time to show you. There's so many ways you can achieve just one certain action. So right now I'm in my folder part. So this is the Lottering Traders data set. So I would go to the folder, I'll select the first one, which is categories, and I'll open that. So once you once you select open, you're going to have this window, which is called your navigator window. It's going to pop up to this transform your data, and this will lead you to Power Query Editor. In Power Query Editor, this is where you perform some data transformation and cleaning in Power BI. So now I need to bring in the other data sources. One thing I want to mention as we go along this project. It's a project, so I might not be able to go back to it. So if there are certain things that you don't get, it might be good to drop it in the chat early on so I can attend to it. So now I'm going to add another source. So I'll go to new source. Hello, no. So um Mova, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't see your power BI screen. I can only see the slides. And I that's it for other videos. Oh, oh. Let me see. Did I share just that? Let me stop sharing and share again. Okay. Can you see Power BI now? Okay. So can you see my screen now? No, no, no. Okay, let me check if there's an issue in my network. That should work. Hmm. What could be the problem? We don't have time. To try this again. Can you see the screen now? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so you can see Power Query Editor? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I think I, um, I think you might have missed out on a part. So I'm just going to close this and take that over again. Just close this. So I'm taking that from the top again. So now we're in Power BI. The very first thing you want to do is get data. So I'm in my home tab. I'll go to get data. So I'm going to get data from a CSV file. I'm the folder part. So I'll select the first CSV file, which is categories, and I'll open that. So this is the navigator that we form today, or you don't look if your data is clean already. Then the next thing I will do is still in my file, I'll go to new source. So I want to bring in more data. So new sources of data. So I'll select new source from CSV file, and I'm going to repeat it and bring in all the data. So I'm going to do this a bit fast because of time. Ready a bit behind. Let's see. Customers open. Okay. 
new source csv employees open okay new source csv other details open okay new source So what I'm doing is I'm just bringing in the data. So you can go through it this way. You can bring your data in a folder and duplicate your queries and filter for each file you need. So this is our last data coming in. Sign. So we have our data in. So the next thing to do is, if you can notice something right now, you can see some of this. So these are some data profiling in Power Query Editor. We're not going to go deep into the data cleaning because that is not yeah. the purpose of this class. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Well, your screen is. Okay, I think it's lagging. Yeah, we'll continue. Continue. So, oh, can you better. see now? Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, okay. All right. So, now I'm just going to start with changing my data types and data clean. So, this data now is from Maven Analytics. So, it's always like fairly clean. Maven Analytics, they have a way of like treating data and getting it in almost the um, ready for analysis so it's just for you to perform a little data clean and then go straight to your analysis so i'm just going to change this category id to text data type because i'm not going to be using it for any any calculation so it's better as a textual data type i'll do the same for any other so this now i need to replace this row i need this customer id to be the header here so i'm going to select this and we use first row as headers. So I'm under the file. I'm under my own tab. Use first row as headers. So that's going to work. Okay, so I'll move to my employees table. I'll change this to text data type. Replace current step. To the other details. I'll change my other ID to text data type. Product ID to text. I think I can just select both and change your data types to text at once. Yes. So what I did was I selected both. What do you want? Control. I select the second column, right click, change type, and I selected text. So let me go on to the next order table. I'll change this and this to text data type. Let me go to product table, change this to this and this to text data type. Then the last one, which is going to be our shippers. I'll change this to that type. So I've gone through the data already. And if you go through it as well, you see there's not much data transformation or cleaning needed. Let's change data types, replace um, the column headers. So now I'm just going to close and apply this into Power BI so we can get started with analysis and creating a dashboard. So Muba, please, can you kindly confirm you can see my screen? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, perfect.
So if you notice something, this data set is not one, it's not a flat table. So it's not just one data, it's not one data table. We have about six, seven data tables here. So we're going to need to establish some relationship between tables. So once you come into Power BI, you need to go to your model view. So we have our report view, data view, and model view. So I'm going to model view now to establish any relationships. So Power BI will automatically detect relationships, but sometimes you would want to maybe just delete that and go about creating your relationship yourself. So I'm just going to delete this and create some. So you can also turn off auto detect in your settings. That will make it easier than going through this. So I want to create the relationships. So I'm just deleting for now, and then I'll start creating the relationships. Okay, so yes, I've deleted all these relationships for now. So I just had an idea before creating my model here. Let's go back to my report view or, or let's go back to my table view rather. I want to create a calendar table or a date table. So what a date table lets you do is you can perform time intelligence calculations on it. So to perform time intelligence calculations using DAX, one of the requirements is the date table. So once you're working with time related data in Power BI, you need to create a calendar or a date table. Now, how can we do this? You're going to come to, you select any column, or rather, you select any table. So I can select customers or categories. So the table tools is activated, and then I select a new table. And I'm just going to call that. You can call this calendar, you can call it date, table, anything you want. So I'm going to use the calendar auto function. So calendar auto. So you can also see what that does is it kind of tries teaching you by just looking at it. You can see what this is going to do. So it's going to return a table with a column of dates calculated automatically. So what calendar auto does is it's going to go through your dates and it's going to return you a calendar date with those dates included in it. So I'm going to select this and enter. So now we have our date if first column. So now I want to create other columns for me to be able to perform um, various calculations. So I'll start with creating a year column. So now what you need to do is you can select this column and you see your column tools is activated. Then you go to new column. And I'll select, I'll select, um, let's call that year. So year would be, we're going to format calendar. So what value do we want to format? This is our calendar date. And what formats do we want it to appear in? I want it to appear in four. So why, why, why? So this is going to represent the year and I'm going to click enter. So you're going to have a new column with the year extracted from the dates. So now I'm going to repeat the same thing for month and quarter as well. So I'm going to try to do that quick. So for months, I will be formatting that format calendar calendar date. So I'm just going to use um MMM. So it's just going to give me three words. So like J N, like January. So that's what I'm going to use for month. Now I'm also going to create quarter as well. So let me just create a new column for my quarter. So for quarter, I'm going to format it, my calendar date. So I'm using the format function, what value, the calendar date. I'm referring to the date column. And then the format is going to be, so you're going to use your 
backward slash to to print the character Q, and then the second character Q is going to give you the number. So the second character Q stands so is, is equal to one, two, three, four. So let me just show you what this is going to do. So this is going to print your quarter for you. So if I remove this country X, all I will have is just one, two, three, the quarter. So I'll go back and put that in. Because it makes sense when you can see Q1, Q2, Q3 is better that way. Also, I want to create what we call the, so I'll go to new column again, month number. So that would be month number, right? That should be calendar date, the month. No, not this. So month is the function to use. And once I select month, I'm going to see returns a number from one to 12 representing the month. So calendar date, I have to provide it a date. So once I provide a date for it, it's going to return the month. So why am I creating this month number? I want to be able to sort this month by the month number. So remember when I said in the last class that some categorical variables have their inherent order. So you have to order them the way they appear. It has to come January, February, March. You can't order them in like, let's say ascending order of revenue or descending order of revenue. It's not intuitive that way. So I'm going to select my date table first, and I have to mark this as a date table. So I'm going to come here, table tools, mark as date table. So selecting this date, mark as date table, select this, mark as date table. I need to mark this as a date table. So probably, you know, then the column date, and then OK. Now I want to sort, I was earlier telling I want to sort this month in its inherent order. So I'm going to come here and go into my column tools. Since I'm referencing a column, I'll go to this sort by column. So this sort by column will tell me what do I want to sort it by. And I want to sort it by what? By the month number. So I'll check that it's being sorted by the month number. So let's go back to our model and try to model this. Are you in the model of your ID? I don't know so. Let me ask. Uh, Are you in the model of your? Screen is lagging. This.
Hello, no, so Aide. Está bien. Aide. Hello? Okay. So I'm back now. Let me try to share my screen again. Sorry for that, guys. Kindly confirm if you can see my screen now. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, yes, so yes. let me go to Power BI and see if you can see that. Yeah, that's it. Okay, perfect. So apologies for that, guys. So um, what I was doing earlier, I was creating the calendar table and I don't know where it got cut off from, but I would just see if I can just quickly go through that. So I created the calendar table and our date table as well. So from there, I also created some month, month number, quarter and year. So that's just a bit of what I did. So basically what I've done is create the calendar table now. So I want to just model the data and then we're going to go into the analysis. So now we're in the model view. I'm going to minimize this. So I'm going to create, start creating relationships between tables. So you can select from here, and then you can see this and icon. From there, you can pick to where you want to create relationship with. So you can create relationships like that. To me, that's like the fastest way for me to create relationships. I don't drag and I drop it but everybody has their own preference so now i'm going to go to employee id to create a relationship between the employee id and this other table mm -hmm. also this product and its Categories, there's a relationship between that based on the category ID. So I'll create a relationship with that too. I think one of our tables is missing. Okay, our customer's table. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to place all my, my dimension tables on top and then my fact table so I can see clearly. You can also use like the star schema where you surround your your fact table with your dimension table anyone works i just want to see it clearly right now so i'm going to create a relationship between the customer table and the other table customer table and the other table so i'm going to pick this and place it here So 
customer's customer ID. So what I'm doing now is creating relationships between tables that have a common key or a common identification. Here yeah, now we have customer ID and customer ID as well. So the this other details is our facts table. If you check, you see about 2,000 rows of data. I'll show you that when we get to the data view. So there's a relationship between the order table and our, our product table. So for each product, we have a key stored in the orders. So I'm going to drag and drop that as well. And also create a relationship between these two tables. You can see other ID and other ID here based on what we want to do. Also, I think we're about to we've about created enough relationships based on our analysis going for that. But our calendar table should have a relationship with our order. Let's use other dates. Let's create a relationship based on other dates. So I would want to place this next to it. Let me move this a bit. I can create a relationship between the date and the other dates here. Other dates, other dates. So I've explored, so we've done the model and let's go back to our report view. So we've, so I've kind of explored this data already and I have some questions I want us to look at going in our analysis. So I'll just go to my slides. So these are some of the questions I want us to include in our story with this data. I want us to check if there are any noticeable trends over time. What are the best and what selling products? So if you go back to our case study, we have about the sales trends, product performance, key customers and shipping costs. So we should help the company understand performance in these four key areas. Now, based on this, I have some questions I want to start with. I want to check if there's any trends in sales over time. Does it look like sales has been improving? throughout the years, what are the best and worst selling products? How is shipping cost for the company? Is it consistent across providers? Can we identify any key customers? Then what is the on-time delivery rate? On-time delivery rate, talking about um, our, our shipping date. Are we shipping exactly on time? So is the on-time delivery rate being met? So these are just some of the questions I want to cover. So we're going to start with some exploratory analysis and we'll start with creating some measures that can help us. So how do you know exactly you need to create a measure or you need to even create a calculated column? Let's go to Power BI now. So I'm going to go to my dimension, no rather, my fact table. So going to my table view, I can see all my tables here. So I'm going to go to other details. So other details now, you can see under here, we have about 2,155 rows of data. So compared to other tables where you see just miniature data, just little data. So once you come to other details, you see a lot of data because this is like historical data. Every day people buy something from your company, right? So moving on, we have our unit price here and we have quantity and we also have discount. So you can come here to the drop down to see how discount is being evaluated. So this is in decimal points. If you multiply that by 100, or if you come over here, you can change it to like percentage if you want that in percentage. Not, not the sign, sorry. Not the dollar sign, the percentage sign, rather. Just a mistake. So now you can see that in the percentage. So about one percentage discount was offered. You can see 20% discount, 25% discount. So let me just cancel this and I'll just remove it from the percentage for now. I can work with it either way. 
So now I have unit price and quantity. From our very first question, let's go back to our slides real quick. The very first question is saying, are there any noticeable trends over time? So I'll start with my sales. I want to see if there is any noticeable trend in sales across the years. So starting off first, you can see we don't exactly have sales, so we need to create that in Power BI. So what can we use? This is where that comes into place. So first thing first, this is an executive report. So we want to provide them with some KPIs, with some metrics that they can use to track. What do you think are the metrics that our clients are interested in? If you're working in a typical setting, you can ask them what they would like to see in the report. You can get feedback from them. But from here, we can always do research online and search. So we'll, they would like to see the total revenue they are making. They would like to see month on month and year on year increase. And they might also want to see the average order value. Now, what is the average order value? Average order value is just saying on average, what are we selling for, uh, for an order? So let's Let's take it back a bit. So let's calculate revenue real quick. So to start with, I'm going to create a table where I can keep all my measures so I don't really get confused. So I'll go to my home tab and I'll enter data. So I'm trying to create a new table which I'll call measures. So now I will just type call this, I will use underscore measures because I want this table to be at the top. Of. So I'm using this underscore so it gets ranked at the top of the list of my tables. I don't want this M to push it like between the tables. So I'll just load it. So there's nothing here. I'm just going to load this in. Okay. So the very first thing we have to do is we have to calculate um, our revenue, right? So let's start with calculating the sales by doing what? By multiplying our unit price with the quantity. So starting off with, this is our order details table. I can decide to create a new column. So we can see, we can have that stored. So I'll start with sales. So sales, I want to get sales. So that's unit price by, by quantity, right? So that would be order details, unit price. Multiplied by order details quantity. So this is it. But also there's something different here. We have discount. So discount is being applied. So instead of just this, we have to also add our discount with this. So what do we do? So I'm going to multiply this by one minus the discount. So what is now the actual price if you are removing 20% of that? So that's one minus 0 0.20. That would give me 0 0.80 multiplying the revenue with it. So I'm doing one minus what my discount I'm just going to go to my discounts and enter this same. So I've calculated the sales now. So sales is calculated now. I can also go to my where is my, my column tools. So let's give that dollars currency. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is get the total sales across. So to get the total sales now. And now I have my sales, I can move these sales to the measures table. So it's just in one place, right? So let's come here. I don't think we have time for so a lot of things. So let me just go on. Let's create our revenue. Let's let's create the total of sales, which is also called revenue. So I'll call this, I'll create a new measure this time. To create a measure now, you just select a particular, you can select a particular um table. Right click and new measure. So we new measure now. So I'm going to enter in my let's call it our uh, revenue. Let's see total revenue. Or let's just say revenue. Two means the same thing. Revenue. So I'm going to sum up all the values in that sales column I created now. So other details so I can get sales come up. So once I have sales come up, I select it and it's going to sum up everything. So that's what the DAX function sum would do. So remember what I said about context, having your revenue, total revenue made is good. Let's go back to our canvas. I'll bring, I'll put that in the car visual. 
revenue. Drag and can place that over here. So now this is not, you see exactly what is missing here. There is no context. What do I have here? Is it dollars or what? So selecting this, my measure tools is activated and I can see this formatting. So I'll select the display these values in this column as a currency, yes. So then the next thing I want to do is, this is the total revenue. This is an executive KPI dashboard, right? So they might want to see, they might want to see how you're doing based on a monthly basis. This might be a monthly report that you keep giving them. They might want to see, okay, for April, for May. So I'm going to try to filter this to the last, to the last, um, so the last month with the complete values. So if you explore this data, we don't have enough time. If you explore this data, you'd see in your Power Query that the last um, the last month with complete values is April, with complete sales values is April 2015. So I'm going to bring a slicer here. And I'm going to go to my calendar so I can bring in the year. And bring in the month. So I want to filter this to April. This is not a slicer. Let me change this to slicer 2015. So this is how much made in the last month. So this is the total sales the last month, the month of April 2015. This is one of our insights going for that. So I'm going to come to format your visual. I don't want this. I want the full numbers. So I'll go to call, call out value, scroll down to display units and none. So you can see everything. So I'm going to remove the decimal places and make that zero. So that's going to show. Now we have the total revenue. Now, how exactly does this fit into our big picture now? How are we, in April 2015, we made about 100, 200, 123, $799,000. Now, how exactly does this fit into the big picture? Does this mean we did better in April compared to the previous month or not? So let's create a new measure to calculate our revenue month on month. So I'm going to create revenue month on month. I hope it's not, I hope my, it's not lagging. It's fine, it's fine. So for month on month, if you can remember from what I explained yesterday, I said you want to check, let's say you're living, this is March, this is April, right? You made $100 March, you made $200 April, you want to calculate your month on month, what do you do? You do April minus March divided by March. So now you have the calculation in your head. Now, how do you bring this to life in using DAX? How do you go about this? So I'm going to write our title. Now for every DAX, measure column you have to have a title so that is our revenue month on month equals to now what do we want to do we want to calculate month on month i'm going to try to break this down so shift enter so shift enter so i want to do a division because what i said to you now is i'm doing 200 minus 100 dollars divided by 100 multiply by 100 percent because i want this i can also include the percentage sign here yeah? i want this to be in percentage so how exactly am i going to do this now so i'm going to use divide since i'm doing a division i can use divide so i want to divide based on the context the current month revenue i have so i'm going to call current month revenue i'm going to show you how this kind of fits in the big picture, current month revenue. And I want to, 200 is my current month revenue minus 100 the previous, so minus the previous month revenue. Let me just shorten that, previous month revenue. So you see what this divide is taking, is to take a numerator and a denominator. So my denominator now is going to be the previous month. So that's going to be the previous 
uh, previous months, previous month revenue. So also, apart from just using your normal division, which is like slash, what divide does so it also provides you a way to escape errors. So if there is, if you're going to have an error in this calculation, you can provide a way to like come out to avoid that error, which is an alternate result. So you can just put it there. So in case there is, in case there's something, I don't have values, just return zero instead for me. So this is what you do to divide this. Now, this is not the full picture now. So how do I now start getting my current month revenue? So based on this, based on my filter right now, April 2015, I'm already in that current month. So all I need to do is create a variable and pass this measure into that variable. Now in DAX, you create variables using starting with var, V-A-R. So my variable, I have to give it a name and that is my current month. Which month am I in currently? Current month revenue. So I'm passing it based on my contents now. I mean, I'm going to use the total revenue. Okay, I just called that revenue. So let me stick with that revenue. So I am. Uh, I've provided this. Anytime you use the variable, if you want to make it of that variable, you need to call it back. So that is like return. You need to tell it to let's use the word. You need to tell it to return back to you. So let's just you have to put return. The next thing is for me to be able to go back a previous month. So how do I go back a previous month? We're going to make use of calculate function, and we're going to make use of a very important function, date add. So date add will make you think you're adding a year, which it works, you're adding interval, like a year or a month to it, but you can also take it back a year or a month. So I'm going to create another variable called my previous month revenue, which is what I wrote here earlier, previous month revenue. How do I how do I think about this? How do I make this thing return my previous month revenue to me? So I'm looking at April 2019. I want it to go back to go back to April 2019. Go back to March 20. I'm saying 2019. Sorry, April 2015. I want it to go back to March 2015. So how do I do this? So you're going to make use of calculate function. So I want to create a function to calculate my previous month revenue. So you use calculate. So what do I want it to give me? What's the expression? I want it to calculate revenue, which is the measure I have revenue. Now, what is my filter? What am I trying to filter? How am I trying to craft this? I'm trying to take it back by one. So I'm going to make use of date add. So once you see date add now, moves the given set of dates by specified interval. So I want to move this back one by what by one by one month, take me back one month. So which date should I give it? This is where our calendar comes into place. We already created that. So we just write calendar, calendar date tab, and then the number of intervals I want it to take. So date add, like you see, is taking you forward. So if I write one, I'm taking it forward by one, but I don't want to go forward. I want to go back, but we'll not go backwards in Jesus' name. So <laughs> I'm just going to write minus one. So this is taking it back one step. Now, what interval am I using here? Am I going back day? So see how it's already providing you options. Do you want to go back a day? Do you want to go back a month, a quarter, or a year? So since we're working with month on month, we're going to select month. I'm going to close that. So there is still one. We still, we still need to close this completely. And then this is how it works. So this might be a bit like you might not be able to read this easily. So you might want to, OK, OK, I think I didn't mention. To go to a new line, you have to use Shift Enter. So to go to a new line, you can't just use Enter. So I want to go to a new line here. I can do Shift Enter, and it takes me to a new line. If I want to go to a new line here, Shift Enter, and it takes me to a new line. So kind of make my code, my dark code, more readable, easily readable. So now, what this revenue month on month is going to do is going to calculate, divide the current month, the previous month. I don't know if, I hope that explanation was good enough. 
we'll still address that in case there are questions. So I'm going to just commit this now. That's going to be our month on month. So where is our, let me get a new card visual. Let me show you month on month, month place this year. Okay, so exactly what you should do also, once you create your measure, still in the measure tools, you want to make that a percentage. So you make that percentage, you can also remove the decimal place if you want to. I want to remove this, fine. So now you can also, one thing that's very important to use, like checking that your DAX measure or your DAX calculation actually does what you want it to do. In this case now, if we want to check it, let's say Manoli want to check this. We know April 2015, we have 123799. Let me see if we can do something real quick. Let me just bring my calculator up here. Yeah. Calculator up here. Seven nine nine. So that's one two three. Let's go back a bit. One two three seven nine nine. That's what our month over month. One two three seven nine nine minus. What do I have for March? One zero four eight five four. One zero four eight five four. Let me see if I can go back. One zero four eight five four. So we get 18,945. So this I'm going to divide it by the previous. So I'm just checking that it works. I'm going back a bit. 18, I think we had about 18. 18, all right. We had about 18. Let me see if I can quickly do this. I don't know why I mistakenly. I can't escape my screen. Okay. Oh, my minutes was so bad today. Please let's hold on some minutes for our speed cap. I think she's having a nice funky to join by the please. Hi guys, please can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, sorry about that again. I don't know why this work is after my life today. So let me share my screen back. I don't know if um where did it go off? Where did I go off? So I can pull back a bit. Calculation using calculators on their previous months and current months. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yes. So let me just you can see my screen now, right? Let me confirm that. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So one, two, three, seven, nine, nine. So that's where I was. 
0.23. It's because the numbers that you're actually sharing with people, the numbers actually matters. So it's not about you. You have to like be sure that it works. Because I'm just trying to check this out. So what I'm doing is just doing it in a mathematical way. And you can see what we have here, which is 18.07, which is the 18% we add earlier. So you can check it with April. So that's 18%. So you can see that it works. So what I just did was I filtered for when it was April 2015, and then I filtered for when it was March, and I performed the difference between the revenue, which is what our DAX is doing. So DAX is kind of like a bit about math. The reasoning behind it is because you're making calculations, obviously. So I just wanted to show you that this revenue month over month, we our numbers are actually correct because if you're telling somebody you're presenting this inside someone you want to actually be sure like once you're done with your report you want to cross check that your numbers are actually correct so let's move on to the year over year and this one is going to be me basically doing a copy and paste of this the only thing i'm going to change is the year because the same i'm just telling you to move back a year so this same dax is going to work so i'll just copy it and just change it so i'm going to create a new measure for that. So I'm going to paste that in. I'll just change this part to year by O by year year. I'll change this. Anyway, I see months, I'll just change that to year. Anyway, I see months, I'll change that to year. And yeah, I'm telling you to pull back a year. So it has to go back a year, so I'm going to change it to yeah. I'm just trying to be fast a bit. Okay. So this is our year. Year on year. And I'm going to format that also as a percentage. So now the next um, thing I want to check is, so since I have revenue now, I have revenue. What I can do is I can answer the first question in our slides which is like, are there any noticeable trends over time based on sales? So I can show the sales trend over time. So now I'm going back to Power BI. Let me show the sales trend. So what I would do is select a line chart to show trends. And then I will select a line chart to show trends. Then I should have my revenue and my year. So I'm going to bring my year. To the exercises, my month, is it this way? Revenue. So now one thing you notice as I'm doing this is the fact that I'm not seeing any line chart, like because I'm filtering. So it's the, the context is I filtered it to a single point but I don't want this to affect my line chart. I don't want this filter contest yet to affect this line chart. So while I want to give them a, an overview of like, what are we doing? How are we doing this year, which is April 2015, or this present moment, which is April um, 2015, I also want to provide them with an overview of like how, how sales has been across the years. So what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to go to format this, edit interactions so selecting the visual here format edit interactions 
that should come up. Okay, I've not selected it yet. So edit interactions. So I want to. This always has a way. This is not it. This is for this. Okay. Okay. Now I'll just do. I like this format. Turn off this. Turn this back on. I want to be able to see this interaction so I can turn it off on this visual, but it's not coming up exactly. I can just, I can still figure that out. Let me just, let's move our current filter context for now. Yes, that's up. That's up now. So I'm going to just move that. So I want to, let me see, let me see, what is this giving me? We have our year, we have our months. No, this is not it. I don't want it to be looking like that. Yes, so this is, this works. The current context is still applied because I'm still just saying January 2015 year. Okay. Yes, so none. Now I'm going to change this back to month and the year I initially had. Not like this. Just coming, I'm just trying to. No, the year has to come before the month. So let's just stick with the dates. Let's stick with the dates. Okay. I don't want this chart because it looks a bit busy. That's the thing. I don't, it's like a lot. It looks like a lot is happening there. So what I'm trying to do is to get it to look less busy, which is this. So this is what I was trying to get it to do. So also what I did earlier was to edit interaction. So while this filter is affecting this and this, the current context, I don't want it to be affecting this showing the trends over the year. So I don't want it to be showing me a single point. So what I did was to go to the format, edit interactions, and to click here to change the interaction to none for this visual. So that's what I did there. So creating a line chart now, I selected my year and month and the revenue. So I want to tell a story about the revenue over the years. So if I check around, you're going to see that there are two points where you see a peak you're going to see a peak and a drop in revenue. So if you come here, which is the current month or the last month, which is April, this is where you have like the highest revenue base. You can see this is where you have the highest revenue. And if you come to August, this is where you have the lowest revenue in this historical data. So how do you get them to look at just these points that you want them to see? Let's, let's 
go to um let's try to format this so if you come here now you want to format your you turn on like you turn on markers and you want to format your marker to show the color you don't get to let's see if we can do that so we can show all you can show all and format your color so in this context like this we can be able to format august and the highest point here which is april so i'm going to go to august which is 2013 august though so there are other ways you can format it using dax dynamically but we're just going to stick with this for now so i'm going to pick a red color for no this is the wrong context this is the wrong I'm talking about august 2013 I'm going to pick August 2013. Don't mind my eyes. Yes. And let's go to April and use green for April 2015. I'll change this to a green color. So let me just change the color code to two six seven seven six F. Let's use that color code. And oh god, I should have I should have done this before. I'm going to go over it again and again. Okay, so what I want to do actually is to make the default gray. Make the default color gray instead. And make our lines gray. So I'm going to my lines and I want to change my lines and make it gray. So line, line colors. I, I don't want to, I'm trying to push it to the background so you can easily see. So once you look at this chart, you can easily see your, these two parts. You can easily see August and April. But that's what I'm trying to do. So we can go ahead and start creating a, let me just create a, um, let me lay what I have right now on a new canvas. Let me create a canvas. So once you're creating, you want to create your background. So people can create their backgrounds in PowerPoint and it generally helps in performance too. But I choose to create mine here. So I'm going to get, I'll insert its shape, boss. Shape. I'll insert its shape. So I'll just insert its shape. I'm just trying to create a canvas. I'll change the color to, I'm using a green. I can change that color. The shape, I'll change the shape to something like this. Let me make that 12. So this. A bit, yes. Then I want to I want to give myself more space in this. So I'll select anywhere in the canvas format. I want to increase the size. So I can decide to like say I'm adding. What I'm adding here, I'm adding the other part. So let's say I'm adding 800 here, 1520. I'm going to add the same 800 here. So that's going to be like 2080. So I kind of have that same shape. So I'll just, I just need to change this shape. The rounded corners is too much. So the first thing anybody's going to see when they come to your dashboard is a title, right? So we want to insert our text box and our title. So inserting our text box now, I'm going to come here to my font size and pick maybe 42, and I'll call this the Northwind Traders 
executive not in traders an executive report so i would make this one smaller so about let's say 28 then I want to reduce the transparency. I want to uh, completely eliminate transparency. So selecting this card, I'll go to effect and increase transparency to 100%. So now one thing you see here is the fact that this black is not clearly showing well on this color. So you can decide to change that color. Control A to change your font's color to maybe white. Structure. So next thing I can also insert another um, another shape. I'm just going to place it at the edge. And I'm going to change the color also to the green color. Or I can change the color to a dark color instead. So I would want to include my my uh, my sliders to let them know like the report is for April. But I'm also providing them an overview. The report is for April 2015. So I can create April 2015. I can create a I can create one column in my calendar table that contains year and month if I want to one slicer. But seeing as we don't have time, we'll just stick with what we have, which is our year in one slicer. And I'll replace that and just make that my month. So I would select 2015 year. Okay, and just, I might as well just select April. So I'm going to try to increase this so you can see what I'm doing because I know it's not going to be clear. I just thought about it now. It's going to be very far for you to see. So let me turn off these interactions that are on now. So I want to add my I want to add my card. My card. I want to start laying out my report. I want to start laying out my reports because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, let me insert. I'd like to reduce this so I can see it well. Let me insert a color so I can create a kind of like a break between these two elements. Well, let me change the color to this gray color. So I can insert a, so I'm going to start with my product. Uh, I'm going to start with my revenue. So I'm going to insert my, I can just go ahead and copy my card visual if I want that. Control C and paste that here. Control V. So this is my revenue card visual. So I'm kind of using this to be, I can create that. You can be sure. Let me just remove this one now. 
Let me just move that. So this is my card visual now, but I want to provide context to this card visual, which is the month over month. So I'm going to insert a text box to add that to it. So what am I going to do now? I'll come to insert text box. So, but I want it to also be dynamic. So I don't just want it to be a normal text box where I write the answers I have based on my DAX measure. I want it to be something that in case somebody tries to filter it, it also responds to the filter instructions. So what I'm going to do is going to use dynamic value here to enter that in. So first I'm going to type in month on month. So let me increase that. So let's use 13. So month on month. So what value do I want my month on month to be? So let me show you again. So in my text, this is what I have. Now what value do I want this to be? Then I'm going to select so ask a question about your data. I'll just ask you to give me revenue month on month, which I've calculated. I think I renamed it differently. I'm just going to come and check here. Revenue, revenue month on month. So ask your data revenue. So revenue month on month. And this is it, save. So I'm going to get this value. I'm going to increase this one also to the same size, let's say 20. So now this is going to, let me put the other part So this. So year on year, I'll ask you the same question. Value, revenue, revenue year on year and save control A 20. So I'm going to turn off this title, this category label instead, so I can give it a title underneath it. So title, turn on my title and I'll rename that to revenue. So there's not enough time, so I know I'm rushing a bit. I'll put that in the center and I'll change this to circle UI. And let's just increase that a bit. So this is what I'm going to use to. So I want to group these two elements together so they are together. So I'm going to select this, holding control, select the second visual format, and then I'll group them together. So I'm going to edit this a bit so it doesn't look like they were together. Yeah. Okay, that was, I've joined it together so I can't really make changes. So now to make everything easy, since I've made a copy of it, I can just control C, control V, and just use that throughout. Anytime I need to make anything, I can make use of that. So I'm going to repeat this again. Because I want to, if you can remember from our case study, we talked about the sales trends and product performance. So there are lots of um, lots of pages to talk about. So I can just provide this here. So I can insert a text. So this is about um, let's pick twenty four. It's about sales strength. Or well, we can just call it revenue. So that is this part. This is about sales strength. So the effect. I'll just make that transparency then I would make the color, the right color. 
so for our sales trends so let me zoom in a bit so you can see so you can see what we have sales trends and i can also insert another one and this is our so you can already see our revenue our month on month year on year and then the next thing you want to provide i can add my line chart over here which is showing them the historical sales trend I can control C this and control V. So you notice now that it's only showing me what it's only showing me one value because of the same interaction. So this filter is being applied to this measure. This filter here, 2015 and April year, it's been applied to this. So that's I'm only seeing April 2015 year. So I need to change this in my interactions. So format, edit interactions, and then I'm going to select this none. So I'll come here, select this, select none, select this, none. Then I'll go back to my filter. Then I'll turn off edit interactions. So it doesn't look a bit. So now we have our sales trend across the years. So let me rename this real quick. Let's format this to sales trend across the years. General title. So let's change this to sales. So let us say sales trend over time. Anything you want to say, it's your relative. I think I've been going with 20. I can go with 20. I stick with 20. So this is what we have so far. Now, what I want to do is we have revenue here. So for sales, I've been able to show the total revenue, a comparison with month on month and year on year. So this month on month now is giving them much context. Are we doing better? Did we perform better in April compared to the previous month? You can see 18%. Also, if you look at the sales trends over time, what are the insights you can take from this? You can take the insight from this that the worst performing month is August 2013. That was when you end the list revenue. And the best was when it was in April, which was just the recently concluded month based on this data. This was where you end the most. So these are some of the sales trends they can take. And they can check to investigate if there is something they did during that period. Was there a campaign or anything? that could have caused this price. Now, if you look at this May now, you can think this May, it's, this May is not the least because it does not contain all the sales values. If you check your data in data profiling in Power Query, you see that you do not have a full list for me. So let me just move on because time is very out of time. So what I want to do next is I want to replace this measure with the average order value. Now I mentioned average order value as a metric that you want to see on average for every order that I get, how much am I making? So what average order value does is just the total, the total, um, your total revenue divided by the total orders you have, like unique orders. So what I'm going to do is also create another measure for that. So I'm coming here to select a table and then new measure. So I'm going to call this average, let me just make it simple, AOV, average order value. So for average order value, now I'm saying you're dividing your total revenue by your orders. So what DAX do you think you use here? You're going to use divide. So you use divide. And what are we trying to divide? The total revenue, which you already have as a metric. Total, I think coming up. This should be coming up. Let me just reference that the table, other details, revenue. Okay, it was revenue. Then the denominator should be the, the want to get what the total orders you have. So how do you, what do you use to count your order? So that is the identifier. That is the order ID. So I'm going to count. Order ID. Order ID, order ID, 
480. Now, if you notice something, I mentioned uh, um, I mentioned distinct like um, the distinct other IDs, right? But if you come here now, I didn't really use count distinct, so you might be wondering, right? So let's go to our other ID table. Others, let's go to the others, others table. Where's the others table? This is the others table. So the others table is also a dimension table. So this means you're going to have every other ID is unique. So that's why I didn't need to exactly specify. So even if I use count distinct, I'll still get the same thing. So let's go to the measure I created now, which is AOV. AOV, AOV. Sorry, I'm rushing. I'm just trying to keep up with time to have something. So now this is the measure I created to count the AOV. So let's see that in a card. So I like to use a card or a table to see what I have anytime. So let's just create another this thing. So what I started out with was just trying to create some things in my data. So if you are working with data, you, you might have something like this initially. You're just trying to get some things from the data. You, this might take you a while. This might take you days. You're trying to like uncover insights. This is not something that I'm just starting to, to like, oh, to see the picture right now. So let's go to page three. Let me just show that. AOV, AOV. Let's change that to card. This. Let me, I don't like this. I want to also format this so I can see the numbers as it is. So I'll change this to none and make the decimal place there. So also remember to always format this. So this should have its currency. So except you're talking about quantity, it should have a currency. So let's see now. So this is our average order value. So this is telling us that on on average, for every order that we get, we make about $1,525. So this is the context. This is the message I'm trying to get across now. So we can also create month on month and year on year for this. So if you imagine now, I just created month on month, year on year for sales, which is our revenue. And now I'm creating for average order value. So imagine if I want to create for so many metrics, I want to create for units. This is kind of like redundant. I'm recreating this thing. So this is where calculation groups comes into place. But this is not something we we'll talk about in this class. But if you want to make that easy, you create like a calculation group. And to do that, you need to have an external tool. You need to have Tableau Editor. So we're not going to really delve into that today. So let's just go with AO. Let's just, we're just going to come up with it. So this our AOV now, yeah, I'm going to go back to this. Ratio, and I'm going to change this to my LV metric. What is this giving? Why is this giving? So you can see it's giving different values because there are filters being applied to each page. So this page now, I have a filter applied to this, which is the April 2015. So that's why I'm having different values. So in case you're wondering why I have a different value on that page and on this page, right? So now we can also create our AOV month on month and year on year as well. So this AOV, why am I putting this here? This is still part of like sales. So I'm going to remove this and just put it here instead. So this is our AOV now. So we have our Sales trend. So I'm going to move this so it can relax a bit. Then the next thing we might want to see, we might want to talk about our shipping and delivery. So let's go back to our slides. So there are also which are the best and worst selling products. So are shipping costs consistent across providers? Can you identify what is the on time delivery rate? Okay, so let's go back. So what I want to do now is try to identify our shipping costs. So if you explore this data, which I we could not we, we could not do for you go to your orders, you're going to see freight. So freight now are your costs incurred from shipping. So if I want to get my total shipping cost, I'm going to sum up this table. So you also create another measure. So this is why when I started talking about 
uncovering insights. I was talking about DAX because you need to perform some calculations, both simple, both complex. So shipping cost now is going to be the sum of our freight table from the others. So freight. So that is our shipping cost. So I'm going to go back here and bring that in. I'm going to put shipping cost. So also I did not format that in currency. I still need to do that. So I'm going to format that in currency. So do not forget this context. Do not forget to put your dollar sign. Do not forget to put your percentage where you want them to be. Do not forget to put the necessary context into what you're passing across. So I'm going to change this title now to be my what? This is my shipping cost. So instead of revenue, let's change that to shipping cost. And yeah, this was AOV, which is our average order value. So instead of using AOV, not everybody would understand. So I will try to use average order value. So this is it. So I want to also create a shape to kind of like demarcate something. So let me just insert quick a shape. Of shape. I'll change the color to a white color. I'll just send this to bring this to the front format. Bring to the front. Uh, and I can change the colors of this if I want. So. Mm. I can just leave this as it is because we do not have time. Let me just leave this as it is for now. We can talk about that. Let me just leave this as it is. We don't have time. I have how many minutes more? So this is average order value. So our shipping cost. So we have our shipping cost now. I want to check my. Let me just insert a text box real quick. So from here, I can drag this and place it here. So I'll make that, I think I used 2420. So I'll make that shipping and delivery. But I just talked about shipping costs now. So I'll make this a green. I'll make the transparency. So sales trend, now our shipping and delivery, we have our shipping costs. So average order value, we have not calculated in months or months and year and year due, but we're moving because we can apply the same knowledge we have from revenue towards this. So now moving to our shipping costs, which we've calculated, there's something you call the on-time delivery rate. So what is on-time delivery? So you want to know if, if, because people ate when their orders are delivered. So this is an important metric for the executive. They want to know if orders are being delivered on time. When we are shipping it, is this when it's is this when we are scheduled it to be required? Is this our uh, is this our scheduled date to ship this product out? So this is something that is very important as well. So I'll just create another metric to calculate on time delivery. So you want to calculate on time delivery rate. So let me show you. Let's go back to our, let's go to our order table. Let's go to our order table. We're in order details now. Let's go to order table. So you can see what I'm talking about. So having a look at your data, you can see that this is the day it was ordered. This is the day it was shipped. And this is the day it's required. 
to have at least been shipped. So if your ship date is less than this required date, or it's the same if it's shipped on the required date, or if it's shipped before the required date, then you're on time. So it has to be shipped before the required date or on the required date to be on time, to be on time delivery. So now I'm going to create a new measure that is going to give me the percentage of all my orders that were shipped on time. So I'll call this on time delivery. So on time delivery, what I want to do is also, I want to get the total number of deliveries that were done on time. And then I want to see out of that delivery that were in time, divided by our total orders, what is the percentage? So I ship a total of 100% orders. How many of those orders were on time? What is my accuracy? So we're going to be dividing the total orders that we actually shipped on time. And we're going to be dividing that by what? By the total number of orders. So this is another, this is where divide comes into place again. So now I'm going to, I want to, I want to bring out the data where, I want to kind of filter out the data where the orders ship dates be actually on time. So what am I going to do there? Let me just shift enter. I'm coming. Let's break this down a bit. So I'm going to filter. I want to filter. I want to filter from my order state only orders. If filter which table, my order table. What is the expression I want? What do I want it to do? I want it to filter to give me the days, to give me the rows where the shipped date where it was shipped before the delivery day, uh, before the required or on the required date. I don't know if that's making sense. So what I want to do is I'll pick orders ship date where it's less than or equals to the orders required date. Required date. So this is going to filter for it. So now I want to now count how many do I, how many? So this is filtering out the orders that are actually on time. Now I want to now count this rules to know how many of my orders are actually on time. So now I'm not going to use the tax function to, to cover this. So that's going to be count rules. I'm going to count this, the rules is going to filter and give to me. So now that I have these rows that were this um the number of orders that were shipped on time. So how do I now get the percentage of the orders that were shipped on time? That means I have to divide the total number of orders that were shipped on time by the total orders. So now what am I going to use? Divide. So I'm going to shift this back. So I'm now going to use divide. So I'm dividing this value, which I have here. This is my numerator now. I will now be dividing this by my denominator, which is the count of all the orders I have. I'm going to count the rows of each order. So like I said, it's, so let's write orders. Our table we're counting is orders table. And we're going to, so now we're going to format this as percentage. This is on time delivery percentage. So I'll format this as a percentage. So let's let me show you. Okay, I don't know if I I can still be here. Let's see. Okay. So error applying change. There has always been errors. There's always errors in this. And they've been making all these updates. Okay. So now I have this. Let me show you. Let's let's get a card visual to see exactly. So let me replace this revenue with my newly created on-time delivery. I don't know if you people got the explanation of the on-time delivery rate. I hope because I would have been able to take that again if there was actually time. So I'm actually trying to replace this. 
like there's a there's an issue somewhere because <laughs> there's an issue. Let's let's go fix this on time delivery. Let's fix this as percentage. Let's go check our measures again. Looks too good to be true. Okay. Orders not equal to. Okay, less than or equal to. Can you pull what's equal? No, no. Okay, filter by. Let me see. You are filtering by anything? two things. Mm, I just I think I am um, just wanted to filter to give me just where this expression is satisfied. I don't know if let me see. Yeah, you're filtered by first one is um what was it called? First one date. is date and then that count was is not filter. Okay. Okay, let me let me um I'm coming. Let me just get a new let's go to okay. a new page where there is no where there is no filter being applied. So filter could be affecting it as well. Let me see first. This is an on time delivery rate. Yes, so the filter is what's affecting it because it looks like hundred percent was looking too perfect for me, like the added Delivery, like is every is anyone getting hundred percent? Oh, it's I edited this thing. So let me go back and correct it. Maybe there's still. What if I still get hundred percent? Uh, okay. So it's the okay. current context. It's the current context that's making that. So the context there was the for that month. That, that 2015 April, that was the context. So for that April 2015, the, the uh, on-time delivery was actually on point. And I think that makes sense if you see the fact that your sales actually went up. So that is that makes sense. So let's move on. Let me just rename this to on-time delivery. So, But I want to see if this on-time delivery rate, if it varies by something so let me just change this first and we'll get to that part so the title should be uh, on time delivery okay so this on time delivery rate so they have let's go to our ship shipper ship let's go to ship table ship shipper ship where is she? God, let me just. I'm just going to round up because it's okay. Like time, time just flew. I cry running. So, so you, as you can see here now, we have three shipping companies. So I want to see if there is anything I can see if there is a particular shipping company. This not wind should be more focused towards if there is a particular shipping company that is meeting their needs in terms of their on-time delivery rate. So I want to create a, so let's create another, let me get a bar chart, a bar chart to be able to, since this is categorical data. So what I want to see is my company, right? The company name from the shippers by the on-time delivery rates. So it's on-time delivery rates. Time delivery rates. Let's see. Hundred percent. So no, this is also I want to disable the interactions for this.
and to scroll down a bit, disable this, disable the interactions, then I can go back to filter. So you can see something that, let me zoom this a bit so you can all see it. Let me zoom it in. Okay, let me undo this. Move it a bit so much. So first things first, I want to push, let's push, let's push this colors the background quick. Let's push this colors. Let's just make it gray, right? And we can select one we want to show. Show all, let's pick the one with the IS, which is our federal shipping, and let's give it a green color. So I want to use my data labels here to see clearly. So this is it, you can see 98%. So I want to round this off. I don't want to be dealing with this. Let's just round the values. Let's show it none. Let's decimal please zero. I think there is still something being affected. So these shipping companies, are they meeting the targets? At least all of them are eating the 95% mark. But it is federal shipping that has exceeded this on time delivery rate at about like 99%. So this is something interesting, like maybe we should look towards federal shipping or I don't know. Um, is there any questions so far about this? I don't think we have. Let me see if there's something I can still do. But we don't have enough time. I can still do something, but time. So uh, the basic thing is for guys to actually understand what I've done so far. So I don't know. I was rushing and I feel like I was trying to rush to cover a lot and I probably didn't make use of the time wall. So is there anything that was quite confusing? Is there anything I should probably take again or any questions? Just drop it in the chat. I'm going to the chat now. Yeah, yeah, the, the, someone said, can you have data sets? Yes, the data we provide to you. We say to you. Um, Olive, I can also, I can make it a drop down. I can make it a drop down, that's fine. It doesn't matter, I can make it a drop down to make it. Ah, oh, <laughs> is lost. Matthew, I'm so sorry. I, I should have cried everyone along. Network just. And I rushed. Maybe you can go by the recordings. Um, it will be on Mubaz channel. Okay, Victoria is saying, do you advise that when we are working on a sales data, we should work it this way to an extent? Um, I'm not sure I exactly understand that question because it's a bit there's no context for me. <laughs> but yes, if you're working on a sales data, you should provide context based on you should do some month on month you should do some time intelligence calculations it's people want to see like any company that they want to see their growth i feel you need to see where you were before and how you are so it's almost like even you yourself as in your data career you look at yourself when you started back april what did you know and now what did you what what do you know now so i think you should work so you should focus on time intelligence functions as well and you should try to Craft your report to tell the story. Are there any questions with the measures? Did anybody get the explanation of the measures? How I did the month on month, the year on year for the revenue? Is there anything that was confusing about that? Oh, 
also my calendar table when i was in the calendar table i think there was a bit of network issue is there any is there any part there that you did not, not get just let me know drop it in the chat victoria i don't know if i answered your question so you like if i didn't answer your question you can maybe let me know Yes, there is other ways you can do measures from month on month. You can probably use your previous month. You can do that. But I have kind of like, I'm this kind of person. Once I've put something inside my head to remove it, I'll just be sticking to it. I'll just be like, so I will, so I've been sticking to the date ad. But yes, you can use other functions from month on month and year on year, Matthew. There is other ways. Why do we create the measures on the other tables? So now, basically for me, I would create the measures on the other tables because that's where I'm using it in. But it does not matter. I do not have to create it on the other table. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to move the measures to my measures table. If you remember, I created a measures table, which I later did not use. So I can move it to that table. So I can move it to that table. So there is there is no like, reason specific reason why i created it on the other table but maybe because the fact that the columns i was working with were in that table but at the end of the day i want to arrange my measures in just one table so that if somebody wants to like go through my report or something they can just see my, my measures they can know which they can see it clearly what i created away from like the columns away from the norm the, the normal data that came with it so there is no um specific reason to create measures on other stable. So there's also something I want to show. So let me just try, I don't know, Muba, do I still have time? Can I still show, can I still like do something? Because I wanted to, we're going to talk about um, two tips and um, a bit of like how you can use um, bookmarks. So I don't know, Mova, do I still have time? Uh, can I just do something in 10 minutes or five minutes? Uh, yes. Okay, I'll give you eight minutes. I'll give you eight minutes. So by night 10, we, we, call, it, we call it a day from there. By night 10. All right. All right, all right. So, um, before just... then, I will, I, will, I will appreciate if you can do a final dashboard, or maybe you can send a screenshot or like the final dashboard as the resources to, so like a picture or a PDF. So, I'll send it to them and they can replicate it, like for them to learn better after creating those things, watching those recordings, they should. What's it called? Practice they well. should be able, yeah, they should be able to build that dashboard, even though without getting the full information to this. Yes. But once they see, they should be able to replicate it. So it will make them think and improve their analytical thinking and stuff like design stuff like that. So once you they already yes. cover the basics, which is important. All right, all right. So let me go to Power BI and show this a bit because this is also part of the insight. So if I'm creating the final report, they are going to see it there and they would want to know how I did that. So there's something I want to share. So let me just use a new page. So there are you're all you're always offering like, like context to things like let's say now you want to see the product that is generating the most revenue. But what if I want to see the product that is selling the most in terms of quantity. How do I provide my audience with that information at a click? How do I allow them to like toggle between those visuals to be like, okay, I can pick. So this is where I'm going to make use of buttons and bookmarks for it. So let me create a bar chart, yeah? And I want to show the top five products generating the most revenue in this data. So let's go to our product. Let me just select product to so product's name and my measures, which is revenue, which I've created. Then I'm going to go to my filter tab and I'll filter the product to give me top end, top what, top five products. Let's say I want to get top five, or we can just limit it to top three if we want. 
top three products by what by revenue. And I'm going to apply this filter. So I want to also replicate this. So I'm going to control C. I'm going to copy that. So let me copy that control C, control V. And I'll place it directly on it. But this time around, I want to use units sold. So I'm going to change that to units. Okay. Since there's no unit sold here, we have quantity in our data instead. So the same thing. Quantity. Now I'm going to change this filter to be by unit sold as well, which is quantity. So now I want to include a remove this a bit. Include a button. So I'm going to get a button now. So I'll go to insert buttons other elements and then I'll pick this blank button. So I'm going to drag that and drop it here. So I can also make another copy again. So I can decide to title this because I want to create, I'm trying to create two views. I want people to be able to see the top products by revenue and by unit sold. So there are lots of other ways you can use this. You might want to show a different context so let me go to the text, same stone of the text. And okay, I have about four minutes left. So let's do this quick. So this is by revenue. And this is by unit sold. So yes, so we have our button sold. So now the next thing I would do, you I'll go to my view and I'm going to turn on two things. I'll need my bookmarks and my selections to work. To create this, I can close my filter. I don't need my filter. I can close my visualizations and this data. So I can have a lot more space to work with. So I can call this um, product by quantity. You can tap on it and rename it. So you can call this product by units, units sold. Then I'll call this one. Trying to tap on it. Okay. So can just leave that, but that should be product by revenue, right? Let me just make that product by revenue. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new. I'm going to add bookmarks now. So to add bookmarks, I'm going to, first off, I'm going to close this, this revenue. So ID is visual, I'm going to select here. So I'm going to ID is visual. So you're going to only be seeing units sold. Then I'll add a bookmark. So I'm going to call this bookmark my unit sold view. And then I'll close this and open this. And I'll call, and I'll add another bookmarks and I'll call this my revenue view. So I can decide to stick to this now and just have this. So now I'm going to go to my buttons. I'll select these buttons now, revenue, and I'll go to my format. I'm going to turn on the action. Turn the action button on. I want an action there. So the type I want, I want to use a bookmark. Now from which bookmark do I want? I want the bookmark of the revenue, revenue view because I'm holding the revenue button. So if I go to the unit sold, I'll do the same thing. I'll turn on the action and I can do that, change the type to bookmark and also change the bookmark to unit sold view. Now, now if I click on my revenue, you can see I only see product by unit sold. So if I control click on revenue, I'm going to have the product by revenue. So your audience can now decide to filter their data based on what they want to see. So if they want to see by unit, so they'll come over here or control click. So if you publish 
switch to the service, you do not need to hold your control to click for this to work. But if you're using this in Power BI, you need to do this. So now, if I want to switch to buy revenue, I'll come here, control and click for it to switch. So this is just the context. So you can also use this in, you can also play around with this when you have to create certain things where you don't want to overwhelm them with numbers. So you want them to see with or without the numbers. So yeah, Mopa, I think my time is up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. And I believe you enjoyed the class today. And it's it's been a long one, long one creating dashboards, building dashboards. You can see most of everything there is not easy. Building dashboards, writing tags. Yeah, I won't I won't say much. Let me stop the recording before I